Hey everyone, we uh, we lost a little bit of that uh, Phil Spencer interview there at the end. There's the the sign off there got uh, chopped off due to what's called an equipment failure. Leave it at that. So uh, yeah, but uh, we we wrapped it up and and Phil said some some very nice things and and it was great to have him on. Uh, again, always uh, one of, one of my favorite things to do every year. So uh, so thanks for Phil to Phil for for coming through. Let's resume with these knuckleheads. Hello. Oh hi. Are, are hi. we are we one of your favorite things to, yeah. to talk to every every year? Are we? Do you like us? He doesn't. Are you in the? To, are we in the top fifty percent? He doesn't usually talk to us. Yeah. This is the one time a year the we get to talk to fifty percent. Just because Nintendo was underwhelming this year. I just. Uh, no, talking to Nintendo was great oh. here on mm -hmm. the show, but... I would like to clarify, equipment failure, when you do equipment failure, there was no, no human here no who was at fault. No human failure. Yeah, yes. no, I want to make sure that was not, yes. It was yeah. an electronic failure. Well, yes. <laughs> Some humans at an OS manufacturer somewhere, perhaps. <laughs> Other updates? <laughs> right. Uh, I just want to make sure that it's not Microsoft. code. Everybody yes. here is doing an amazing job. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a hilarious turn of events. Oh, yes. Hilarious. 2018. It's a great time. Uh, another E3 mystery. The best type. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, another E3 mystery. Should we, should we, should we uh, give the people their update for day two? Yes, let's uh, <laughs> download these updates for yeah. E3 2018 day two. Do you want to do it now or choose a different time? Remind me of the hour. It's nice that you're giving them the option. Yeah, it's, it's weird that you yeah. even asked. I'm going to snooze this one. <laughs> yeah. right. Fair enough. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Deck. So, so yes. you guys are Dick, Dixie Flatline, the freaking cowboys. Dude, there is so much fucking slang and cyberpunk jargon in that thing. Cool. Yes. Okay. Like, Ripper Duck. I came out of that. Yeah. Okay. Was there stim was, was one of the, did, did like, anyone I, get their synapses fried by black ice? I think they are spending eddies. There are yes. future drugs. Uh, there are future Eddie's, drugs that you can take Eddie's whenever you want. Eddie's is short for euro dollars, the global currency. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. This is already good. <laughs> this is already good. I came out of the thing feeling I, like I wanted to just like I don't know, cop some nanos and <laughs> flip chips on some deck junkies or whatever. Like it's just nonstop. Yeah. Yes. So it's can, like can it's like the it's like the Aaron Sorkin of cyberpunk like jargon and sure. slang. I, I imagine crazy. some of that comes from the source material. Yeah. The the the, uh, the tabletop. The tabletop yeah. Game, yeah. You know? so, they reference the tabletop I, stuff. I would like to start with just. The two, uh, we Brad and I had very two different perspectives looking at it, where you described it as very shorthand. So a lot of people I've seen before this that saw it were referring to it as a first-person GTA in right. a future cyberpunk setting, yeah. which I feel like is pretty spot on. Uh -huh. And I came at it as this looks like Deus Ex with a car. I, I think they like, both mean the same thing. Yeah. I think we're, we're coming at it from different ends, okay. but they, but those things meet Dan, in the middle. You, you also managed yeah. to slip into a demo. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, yes. You you hacked your way in there. I did. I, I thought you busted out your red box and then <laughs> used the payphone to call in. Mm -hmm. You whistled 2600 hertz and then you saw the demo. All and of these things. Uh, I thought it was incredible. It's definitely the the best game I've seen this year. I had not thought of the GTA thing at all, but like I really thought there was some like Elder Scrolls uh, stuff going on there, especially with like the dialogue choices. It's, it's kind of all that stuff, yeah. And just the way there there's so many ways that you could approach everything. Like like in Elder Scrolls, I think there's a lot of th times where you'll just encounter a group of people. And you could go through the motions, you could yeah. do the, the conversation, like the part where you're meeting up with the people, the, the military, the Militech yeah. people. And Which, like, you could just smoke them all right there yeah. and then like steal their money on that chip or whatever. Or later on, the guy, the demo guy said you never even had to meet up with them. In, in the course of completing that quest, you could have skipped that rendezvous entirely. Yeah, can't you go to get the spider bot thing yeah. and then like not even deal with the military people? So it is like, it is it is GTA, it is Deus Ex, it is Skyrim. It's like a, yeah. a lot of things you have is seen. Is it The Witcher with computer chips in first More. person? It's not The Witcher at all. It is a I, first person shooter. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know that, but I mean like, right, like structurally no. is the style of storytelling is the dialogue Ooh. stuff? Is in, it? I think no. in the way that no. you could go so many different, uh, vastly different ways of, of approaching a quest. Because in The Witcher, you could really go like like the Bloody Baron thing. There's is so there ways. Cyber Gwent? Not yet. Not that I saw. Uh, no. You can look but, at advertisements. If you see a soda advertisement, you can go up, press a button, and it'll put a little thing on your compass saying, "Hey, if you want to go buy that soda, go here. Here's the nearest vending machine." Sweet. <laughs> I mean, in that The <laughs> like, Witcher. Now was, that's dystopian. <laughs> the yeah. Witcher was an RPG. This it has points you will put into different spots. One of your right. starting yeah. stats is cool. <laughs> it's like it's like strength, intelligence, constitution, street cred, street cred, hack. The last stat is cool. 
Like the character they made had a four in cool. Wow. You do not choose a, a class. It's not a class based game. So you're yeah, not choosing not. a class, but you're creating a character. You named V. As named V, yeah, which yeah, could yeah. be uh, uh, gendered male or female. Yeah. It's uh, it seems like there's cool customization that you'd want cool. from cool. <laughs> mm. uh, the customization you'd want from a, a game that has cyberpunk in the title, and they were very mirror shades. I didn't see your no. character wearing mirror shades. Lots of robotic arms. Tigers on jackets. Lots of all kinds of cyber lines on people's yeah. faces. Lots like, of cords, like USB cables coming out of people's yeah, arms. Yeah, you got a standard like, port in your wrist. That like, you plug that whole, had like the it whole is, front of their heads removed and replaced like, with like lights. Yeah, and yeah. Shit. You, uh -huh. you fight. You okay. fight. You fight a gang. Okay. Who is this, you fight a gang who is described as like basically wanting to become full machines. Like they take it a step further than that's me, else. man. And the gang leader, the entire. Top half of his face is caved in, and there's just a bunch of lights there. Yeah. And I, and I want to. Does anyone have their eyes modified to re refract the light like a cat? I guarantee mm. so. Probably. All right. Like, okay. like the thing you I wanted. I mod in the demo. Like, like fantastic. So Shined. okay, so big, big urban environment with tons of NPCs walking around and a car-centric navigation model. Like that's the GTA yeah. part. Okay. Immersive sim shit. Like, oh, I could hack my way through this if I had enough hacking. Or I could climb up here, or I could just shoot, you know, you or, cool your way or I can something. talk my way through yeah. stuff. Like there's that. I imagine cool is just the talk your way through stuff. I, I think of it. I think of it. Uh, I think yeah. of it as the mustache rating from Mario yes, and Luigi. Sure. A stash. <laughs> um, it's a stash. Yeah. Um, stuff that reminded me a lot of Syndicate in that yeah, you can like hack a downed <laughs> enemy. Uh -huh. yeah. You yeah. can hack a downed enemy to then get access to their network and turn off. Tur it seemed like turn off turrets or, or access. Yeah. Stuff, right? Yeah. So like, oh, you're gonna hack this guy. Remember that part where you hack the dude? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It zooms into his yeah. head, and yeah, it's like the coolest saying. looking interface for a cyber anything I've yeah, ever seen. Like, if you sneak up on him and like hold him hostage, like non-lethal, whatever, you can yeah. hack. Like his plug gun into his network port. is connected to all of yeah. his gangs so or whatever. You, yeah, you can access his whole gang's net. Yeah, so once like, you're in there, you can just like hang on the walls with these like mantis blades, and you can look at all of his like gang members and say like, oh, your guns don't yeah. work. Yeah, you can hack the guy so his gun jams. Guns. So that that kind of reminds me of Syndicate in a couple of ways. Yeah, yeah. So. The reason I keep rattling the stuff off is like I don't feel like any one element of this is something you've never seen before. Sure. Like like every individual mechanic was has some analog somewhere else. Right. But as a vehicle for this aesthetic, like it is maybe the most well realized setting I had, or close to the most that I've ever seen. Feels like they like have, it is so fucking they have cyber covered fun. the canvas. With like like hard. every yeah. fucking bit of the UI <laughs> and the interactions and the dialogue and everything about it is just like dripping with that particular atmosphere. With, yeah. with stuff, I, I want to say there were labels popping up over everybody as you're walking yeah, through. Like I don't every, think this was part of the UI, but I want to say the, it said like Dirt Boy. Every, every person <laughs> you see, that's me. you scan people and it's like Dirt Boy. Dirt Boy is jacking in. Like, like this guy, this guy is a Dirt Boy, that lady is a Corpo Rat. Like yeah. just all kinds but of like watchdogs that give any personal information on them. I think if you scan, so um, you get it, you get an upgrade from your hacker doctor. Uh, that's it? The, the, the Ripper doc. Once you go to the Ripper yeah. doc, you got an eye upgrade that let you do. Wait, it. is the Ripper doc like DOC, like a doctor, or is it is it a is doc? It, he is a doctor. Is it, like is it, like is it Henry Rollins? Anesthetics and drugs. His name is he, like. His name is Dr. Vector. Fuck! And he's like, <laughs> I know, right? You can Fuck! upgrade that like shaves off all the skin from the front of your hand I've and been replaces thinking about it. doing that anyway. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no it. fingerprints, yeah. man. You also, you also get a new eye installed from first person, so the claw comes in and pulls oh, your eye like out. Dead Space 2. And, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then reboots your eyes with better vision. Okay, oh no, I'm back in. So then you get the scan, you get a scan that just makes it look like Terminator vision, and then you get the like, Brackets around people and, and then and text them. Within those instance. brackets, like even the scanning, the just the effect, the treatment around scanning people with that new eyeball is like the coolest shit I've ever and, seen. And that shows like weaknesses to like elemental stuff and everything, like threat level very low. Like you look at the doctor after you get the thing, and threat like, level very low. It's Terminator. It, it's yeah. Terminator. It so is. you see other characters' cool level. I, did not I don't see think that. so. Okay. Uh, like, it's just, it is so fucking, like, eye-popping, day-glow cyberpunk that yeah. I feel like we're going to have to retire the best style category after this comes out. Wow. Like, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. Well, we got a couple of years like, still, but... It was a 50-minute demo, and you just feel, like, exhausted at the end because there's so much shit coming at you. So I was talking to Austin constantly. Walker, and he was, like, breathlessly explaining to me how great all this stuff looked. I bet! And one of the things he, <laughs> one of the things he was describing was, like, oh, you get this gun, and, like, the, the HUD looks great because it'll show, like, it'll ricochet off walls, and you can, like, see the line it's going to take. And like describing it doesn't really do it justice because it's like games have done that before where it's, yeah, it's like a pool game where you can see how it's going to like ricochet. But all the HUD stuff, it just all looks so fucking good. It's yeah, it, it's really neat. So and, and the weapons, so there definitely is a, hey, do you want to hack in here, stealth in here, talk your way in here, sure. talk your way out yeah, of here. Yeah. 
the weapons, though, they kind of back half of the demo was a big weapons demo yeah. of, okay, here's a, here's a handgun. It does the ricochet thing. We got a mod for it. We're going to just unlock stuff. Let's go. Let's debug this. And then it was, okay, here is like, I'm going to get all the name wrongs, but here's Militech weapons. They are, they can penetrate. This can penetrate cover. It's a, uh, their weapons have this kind of property. Almost in a, um, kind of started reminding me of a Borderlands company style thing. Kind of, like, yeah. Okay, and then sure. the, the yeah. corporate, corporate tech. Corporate weapon. weapon yeah. Corporate weapons. Corporate weapons these are, are top of the line. They're high quality. They don't degrade as fast and yeah. stuff like that. Like, so, uh, did you get a fucking sword? Mm. Yeah. No, you get mantis blades. You got the blades, you got, which you can hang from the wall with one and like... So it's one of those things where your your forearm splits open and then the, the blades come oh, out. Yeah, I got one. one of those. Though yeah. in her yeah. room in her apartment, on the wall there are swords. Okay. So that that was kind of neat. Uh, are are the guns coded in such a way? You talk about these different types of weapons. If you shoot somebody, you probably can't take their gun, or do you have to hack something to take their gun and um, be able to use it? So that thing I was telling you about, where they shave off the the part of the hand or whatever, yeah. it replaces it with like this like cyber glove material just okay. on the underside, yeah. and that makes it so like you can grab guns, I believe, and it'll like get past the locking mechanism or whatever. <laughs> can you hit a right on the back of your <laughs> Remember the cars? part where Doctor? Yeah, can you sketch? Uh, on the cars. No. Okay. Like I just remembered the part where Doctor Vector's putting your eye in, and he's talking about how he's got a shaky Gannick hand. Yeah, because he, yeah. he's a doctor who puts in mods, but he has none himself. He's yeah. full human, and he's just like, it's like I got a shaky Gannick hand. I might, I might miss or so something. So he had, did have a like sick glove, like a yeah. trigger glove. Yeah, oh, because you're giving him shit for seeming like a dentist, and he's like, oh, I might fuck up because I'm an organic. Yeah. It was just, it was neat. It, it, I got a lot of Deus Ex vibes just oh, from the mm, yeah. Uh, hey, a Deus Ex and Syndicate. I mean, Syndicate probably from the aesthetic, but uh, sure. uh, a lot of okay. You can if we had a at some point the character walked up to a door and said, it was like if we had a higher security clearance rating, I could hack through this door. Yeah. I don't have. That. Oh, it was a hacking. If I had a higher hacker skill, I could get through this door. Let's go to the fuse box. I have a high engineering skill. Mm -hmm. I can uh, uh, basically reset the power here, and that really reminded me of like, oh, okay, I can un yeah. I can it, lift this grate up. There's always a way in, depending yes. on what you step yeah. into. Yeah. It'll be slightly different. Yes. So is that like a lot of mini games then? Or, no, like, is no, that no, no, show? no. He didn't hack anything in that demo. I don't no. know how that works. <laughs> okay. Um, but like, was the engineering fuse box stuff that wasn't? Like, it was a prompt, and then the person, put, yeah, connect the pipes. Well, when it you said uh, engineering guys, five, and then. Yeah. When you hack into that guy's brain, it does have that like cluster of data or whatever that kind of like splits out, and then you have to go into like oh the weapons thing to shut down the gang's weapons. Yeah. So it doesn't really seem like show a how game. that works. No, yeah. it's not like a, like a Bioshock menu. hacking thing or anything. Uh, okay. There was other neat stuff when you're doing the dialogue trees. It seemed to you seem to be able to interact in a scene, and maybe I'm reading more into this than it was actually there. You're interacting with the scene more than a person because sometimes it looked like. You'd have a person's name, three dialogue yep. choices, then another person's name in that same scene, and some other dialogue choices. But then also your own uh, name sometimes. So sometimes it would say V, yeah, pull grab out the gun, gun yeah, or whatever. Pull out your like, gun. But yeah. yeah, so say V was in there, it would say like V, pull out gun. But say it was like, uh, director, mean director, like, I'll not taking this shit, I'll take this shit. <laughs> and then underneath it would be like, bodyguard, grab his gun, uh, oh, and wow. then underneath that would yeah. be like, V, pull out your own gun. And I thought that was neat. They yeah. can hack you too, so there's one part where you're kind of taken yeah. hostage, and they hack you, and they have like a lie detector app that's like going into your brain or whatever, and you're still doing dialogue choices. So, so you can choose to lie to them yeah. knowing that they yeah. can tell that you're right. lying through the back of your head. And then yeah. the demo, the guy, he lies, and the other guy's just like, she's full of shit! <laughs> yeah. like, oh, well, okay. Oh. You meet up You meet, meet up with the crime boss in his limo at one point, and when he's giving you the mission, he gives you a chip that you stick in the back of your head, and, yeah, then, you you all this, and then you get all this crazy crazy AR shit describing the mission while he's talking to you in your face. Yeah. Like this giant Rick Ross dude with this golden like gauntlet arm like... <laughs> Smoking a cigar. Yeah. A a watching boxing. Of course. Yeah. Um, a lot of boxing. Though I probably the biggest thing I'm not super sure about coming away from that is that the shooting looked a little weightless to me. Like it didn't quite have the... Yes. The impact. Yes. Like the pacing. Yeah. Was, you know, I mean they haven't made first person shooters before. I'm sure they're working on it. But it, but it did not... Yes, did not immediately come off as like the most like refined and precise shooter I've right. ever seen. Yeah. Surprising amount of mobility though. Like there are double dash or uh, double jumps and like air dashes and things like that. Like Call of Duty, like you know the, oh, the mech stuff yeah. or whatever. There's yeah. wall running. There's sticking to the walls. Like a, a lot more than I would expect from a. Is first driving person. in first person? Yes. Uh, it isn't. You, you can go to third person, but there was one segment where there was like a, a shootout where a van with a bunch of dudes gets in front of you and grab the wheel and remember you know, shoot. Remember Dum Dum. Yeah. Dum Dum. <laughs> we shot Dum Dum Dum. Oh. He's one of the gang members. The uh, are so good. For once you guys can tell, is it a completely solo experience? Yeah. Like, a big thing in Shadowrun, I think, is just like recruiting a crew. There was no one. Oh, oh yeah. Like, if there's anything like that, they didn't talk about it. They okay. do, uh, 
it does seem to be sort of day in the life. Like you wake up, like you do a mission at the beginning of the, the demo, but then you wake up like three days later and you're in your apartment and you can walk around. Like you can go in your closet and take clothes out and put them on. You can access your terminal in your room. Like you have a home, you have an apartment that you go back to. It seems, it seems like in the narrative they're telling from what they showed, you are basically a mercenary looking to get in big, yeah. and get the big job. Yeah. Uh, and by working your way, like you are introduced to the, the big man in town. And like if you do this job, you're going to be set up for some big merc work. Uh, and it, I suspect things will take a turn, you know, and yeah, sure. the fate of the world will rest in your hands. It's corporations Number, to take down. Corporations. Corporations yeah. on everything. Numbers pop off of people when you shoot them. <laughs> Zaibatsus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He started off the demo by saying, our game takes place in an alternative time, an alternate timeline where mega corporations run the world. And I was like, um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 it's called 2019. <laughs> 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 That's cyber, yeah, cyberpunk. Yeah, cyber, cyberpunk. Also, hey. also, he started the demo by referring to it as Cyberpunk 77. Said that often. Nice. Yeah. So that's how I think that's how I'm going to say it from now on. Yeah. Um, any hint of release window, uh, not, anything not like that? All. Any kind of, yeah, any, none of the particulars? I, it was probably out of all the things I have seen both, well, oh, I would even include like the Sony press conference. It seemed like a fully realized game. Somebody yeah. was playing right next to Brad. Yeah, there I were see. prompts on the screen to skip cutscenes. There were... Uh, yeah. Um, the the menu seemed fully fleshed out. So way further along than like that first Witcher three demo that they gave. Right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. This seemed like a thing that it seemed playable and not in a fake way. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it could have just been that one quest that they really like. You know, made sure it was ready for yeah, you. Yeah, but, but I was talking to Backlar. I saw it with him. And he was really, really surprised at how far along it did seem. I mean, that may be the only quest they exactly, have in a showable. Right. There's a whole I open know, world they, they have. They did out. say no loading screens. You can move across that whole city seamlessly, and they did. You know, it went from apartment. Like out into your building, downstairs, in a car, drive across yeah. town, go just, in this warehouse. Just seemed that, so, and that this is a very naive thing. I have no idea how games are made, but it seemed like a thing that you don't. If you're if you're rushing to stitch together your vertical slice or your your gameplay thing for just a show, you're not gonna take the time to put in the skip, uh, cutscene button at the right. lower right. It's a thing I've definitely heard some de devs say a little bit here and there over the last couple of days. It's just like we don't want to do just work for a demo. Mm. Like we want, we're making the game. Yeah. We're making the game and, and putting all. And here's stuff what we're in. just going to show. Here's it. what we have to show mm -hmm. that is is ready. You know. So very hard to tell, but it was extremely focused. Like I feel like I came out of that game knowing exactly what it is, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. knowing exactly what they're going for. If they told me that game were releasing tomorrow, I would say. Okay, I think it looks like they are focused. They, you know what this is, right? Uh, and you know, but unlike some other stuff you see at E3, we're like, oh, you know, they're finding it. Yeah, they'll yeah. get there. Yeah. They'll get there. But I yeah. could see as early as the next holiday, uh, mm -hmm. but not too much later past that, like 2020 at the latest. I would think. Sure. Yeah. 20, based on nothing, just a pure guess. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, <clears throat> 2020 seems like. It's a good year for I mean, the, the messages people yeah. were pulling out of that trailer footage the other day, like, there there's bits in there literally saying, like, we don't know how big this game's going to be at the end. You know, like, they're still, I think they're still building it out. Yeah. But I, I, going back to what Brad said before, I, I do also want to say this did not seem like anything uh, that somebody went into the heavens and then brought down yeah, I struggle. the future or anything like that. Like, it looks I, like a video game. It looks like there's a lot of neat stuff in there, but what Brad said is it looks like it is taking... Mechanics and elements, putting it together into a very yeah. I, I, it looks like it, it sounds like another take on a, a Deus Ex style. Yeah, game, it is. Yeah, you know? yeah. yes. And, and with a little more, maybe a little more RPG than that. Yeah, and, and great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like think, that's yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah, those last couple of Deus Ex games had promise. You know, some hit. You know, the the hit to miss portions of those games varied depending on what you were into. But, yeah, but yeah, uh, I know. Um, a lot of people seem to be bummed that it's a shooter and not a third-person game. Like, I, if you don't like FPSs, that sucks. Sure. But I will say, you do see your character a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, in, cut in all the cutscenes, okay. like, yeah. like I was surprised how much you see. Just even if you just care about like what outfit you're putting on and stuff, you're at least gonna get to see the character you made. And I am frequently. I'm a huge third-person action person. I'll usually take that over first-person. But when once I saw the things they were going for in first-person, it made a lot of sense. The scanning. The uh, kind of sure. toggling yeah. on of yeah. different yeah. things, the the kind of seeing through walls, also the kind of claustrophobic nature of some of the hallways you can't do in third person mm -hmm. because you just don't have the room there. Right. I, and I thought that was it made a lot more sense. Cool. Well, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Pretty uh, wild. Also, I will say for people who really like third person, the, the guns look pretty awesome <laughs> to see in first person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Like you want to see yeah. somebody breaking in. Yeah, probably. They're coming back in. 
Uh, it's cool to see future guns very close. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're gonna have to come around the other side. Yeah. Other yeah. side. Other side. Uh, ben. Yes. What did you end up seeing today? Today I saw um, played some GTFO with uh, Alex yeah. and Brad and Jan. That game. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and that was pretty cool. Um, you know, that's from the uh, original Payday dev. You're something of a Payday player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I got out before the microtransaction <laughs> stuff started. I mean, <laughs> so did he. Yeah. Which uh, so did he Ulf, who was helping run the demo, told us this, he did the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really cool. Uh, it's a very teamwork focused game. Yes. It is very much a like. They were talking about four hour and eight hour levels that they were working on. So he's like, this is for like MMO people and FPS people. And, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're basically, um, there's no uh, classes, but you do change your loadouts at the beginning. Okay. And the tool item is really what separates kind of who does what. So like there's a scanner and the person can hold it up to a door and say like, okay, I detect some enemies on the other side and you'll be able to see if they're like asleep and undisturbed, or if they're sc like uh, scouts, were they yeah, very scouts. aliens? Yeah, so it's basically yeah. the aliens motion okay. detector. Yep. Um, and that was cool. Um, there's a lot of puzzle solving. Like, yeah. Uh, so what's so, the, what's so the there's high level premise? It's well, it's like it's it's that style. Uh, Ulf used the phrase horde shooter, which I don't know if that's like the accepted nomenclature at this point, but it's that Left for Dead payday. Vermintide style of Versus like co-op PVE. Okay. Probably some loot. They didn't get in the progression stuff too much, but the, there were mission rewards listed on the mission we played. Okay. And it's um, basically you trying to escape these alien bases. Yeah, you're going down mines. into these mines trying to extract resources and stuff. But so there are in-game like uh, this is a like fetish of mine. There are in-game terminals you can walk up to and just start typing at a command line. Oh. And you're basically hacking like computer systems in this mine. And there will be points where. Somebody else has to be at a kiosk somewhere to feed you information over voice chat that they're reading off a thing that you can then punch into that terminal to like activate certain things. Like it's neat little co-op puzzle solving mm -hmm. stuff. Cool. Like that. Are most of the puzzles that way? Like co-op or? From what we saw, and yeah. there was like a big, they called it like an apex door. It's like a big door opening sequence you have to go through where they like you have to move around to different points in the room to like go. All four things. people will have to be in the same like zone. It's right. almost almost like time. raid style. How'd it look? The, the trailer. Really nice. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say the, the, really good the lighting. stuff they've shown of it so yeah. far looked. Yeah, the, the lighting really stood out as, as a good Yeah, it's a really good looking game. Cool. Super right. atmospheric. Um, and then I saw the two ID at Xbox games, Tunic first, yeah. uh, which looks great. What I mean, that? that is the... <laughs> have you uh, seen is that the one about Is that the one about trains? You're on a train making games? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Um, that looks great. Uh, I didn't know this, but they got the same guy who did the Dust Force soundtrack. Mm -hmm. um, so that game sounds amazing. Uh, and then the other one there was... Uh, the game Generation Zero, which is the new oh, Avalanche, the Avalanche game. game. Oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I got to see them play a co-op demo of that, and it's basically takes place in 1980s Sweden, and you're a gang of like teens basically that have to fight back against a robot invasion. Um, seemed very standard first-person shooting kind of, you know, going around collecting gear. The the hooks in it that I noticed were. Um, all the robots have a lot of points of articulation where like you can shoot off their eye monitors and they won't be able to see or you can shoot their like leg joints and they won't be able to move and you know different enemies will have different uh, abilities like that and then the, la the other cool thing was so at one point they came up on a little town a little village and they found a bunker and inside the bunker one person found a map of the town with like street names and stuff and the other person found a uh, basically like a citizen list, and on that citizen list there was like uh, one of them was a police officer, and so they went and found his house based off the address, right. broke in stealthily and found he had a big cache of weapons, okay. and then they could yep. take those and go on, and then you know it seemed fairly early, um, but drop in drop out co-op, uh, you know you can take your progress with you. They're they're really emphasizing the co-opness. What, what was the name of that again, Ben? The name Generation of Zero? Yeah, yes. Generation Zero. Cool. Alex, how about you? Uh, let's see. Uh, I saw Forza Horizon 4. Uh, there's not a whole lot to report on that. They have not already extensively laid out in, yeah. in various other places. Did uh, they say what weather changes? Uh, there are weather changes. Do, do, does it what change are, something? There's seasons. What does seasons change? Uh, there's, 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 uh, there's a spring. <laughs> We're trying. Where it, where it rains. Uh -huh. it's, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to do it. I want to say... Uh, 
Was it Mahardy who was saying that the seasons change depending on your actual time zone? Yes, and Dan Greenwald said they change every week. They do. <laughs> they do actually change every week. I just didn't want to have the conversation uh, of saying I heard this in the middle of that, so I just let it go. <laughs> and also in the demo, they straight up said every week. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they emphasized every week. Yeah. Well, I... I'm believing Marty. <laughs> Anything's possible. Yeah. The one thing they what, did say. What if I play once a week and it's always just snowing? That's true. Uh -huh. what they they, they did say that the the way that the the seasons will impact the environment will actually change from week to week. So like one winter will not necessarily have all of the same effects as the next winter. I don't know what that means, and they weren't super clear. This about is low it. gravity winter. I don't know, but like they seemed to think that there was going to be a little more to it than just like okay, cool. well here's the exact same winter it's a situation neat idea. again. Yeah. yeah. Also, they said they're adding jobs to that game. Like, yes, it, I heard there was like real estate or something in there. Yeah, you can buy a house. At one point, you may be able to just buy Edinburgh Castle. It's just more Wait. and more Test Drive Unlimited. Yeah. Every, all the way down. Wait, there are crazy taxi a, missions in what that What is that? Game. Is this or, cars? What? Like, are the cars working? You need a car house. No, here's the thing. You get a car and it like, there are missions Let's that you, some there are jobs money. that you get and one of them is like taxi missions. Uh -huh. Like, you are just driving people from place to place like a la, let's say, a crazy taxi. Wait, are there, pe there are human models in the game? Like, there are people modeled? Uh, last Forza Motorsport, you had a driver. Okay. You, you you chose clothing for a driver and stuff like that. Huh. So maybe they're doing that here. It changes everything. Songs? Yeah. I did not hear any officer songs. They did not do that. Okay. All right. But that that was basically what I got out of it. It's a very nice looking game. Uh, cool. We also Brad and I saw Ghosts of uh, Tsushima. Ghosts of Tsushima. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it is the it's same the demo. Same same demo as a press conference. It's a playable? Yeah, they, they, no. Well, they, they, they played it in front of us. It was yeah. the exact same thing. They paused it in a couple points and spun the camera around. But yeah, uh, all uh, in Japanese. I yes, understand. they played it all in Japanese. It's cool. their, so every territory on the disc, there's going to be a Japanese localization oh, cool. for every nice. version of that yeah. game, which that is sense. which is a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, Alex, you asked about the black and white mode, right? I, I so yeah. I, yes. When I was talking to them, I was like, they, they mentioned Kurosawa a couple of times. And I was just like, we thought about doing like a, an all black and white mode, and and the dude just kind of looked at me like, uh oh. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, oh, really good idea. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're actually going to do good that. Good job, Alex. I just, Thank I you. Just thought, you okay. do the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah. I did. Uh, I did confirm that you can do the sleeve wipe on your blade. On it. Yeah. Yeah. With, with a button. Oh, it is a button press. With a with a button. So oh, that's, that's good. Onichambara did that too, yeah, right? Because then you have did. to like shake off the. Yeah. Uh, the coolest, the coolest thing that. thing that they said about that, uh, I asked about like side missions and how the game is structured. Uh, that duel they showed in the press conference is a side mission. Like that's not oh, a, wow. a oh, main wow. story mission. Yeah. Uh, and he said to basically think of it as an anthology of quest stories, an anthology of stories oh. of different characters. Like basically you'll get to know different characters in the midst of this awful invasion. Like it sounded just like a pretty rich. But you will play as the same character. Yeah, you're yeah. you're that one character, but okay. but, but, like, but, but experiencing a lot of different quest lines. Cool. And, and storylines. And then I checked out Spider Man, <clears throat> yeah. which is I mean that game is almost done. Uh, you know you what you have seen so far of that game is pretty much what it is. I will say the swinging is dope. Yep. <laughs> good swinging, huh? Yeah, good swinging, good combat. It it looks really good. Yeah. Like I yeah, yeah. Not a whole lot else to say other than it seems like they made a very good Spider Man game. Cool. That's that's like the, I think that trailer of seeing all the different villains in it. Yeah. Feeling just like okay, yeah, no, this, it, this will probably be cool. It seems like there might be more, and maybe not necessarily like super high level sure. villains, but like you are fighting like Wilson Fisk's like dudes mm -hmm. uh, at various points, and there was at least one other character that I saw that I don't think is part of the Sinister Six. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jason, how about you? Uh, so a few different things. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan and I went to uh, Capcom earlier today, and uh, I saw Monster Hunter, of course. That's the uh, Generations, so it's a double cross Generations. You'd already imported that, hadn't you? <sighs> Had not. Oh. No, actually, yeah. <laughs> you I, were playing the demo or something. Yeah, I skipped okay. I skipped over Generations uh, pretty much uh, exclusively. Uh, but, nope, finally coming to the States. It's going to be out on Switch. It's going to be fun to go back and see these old monsters because, like, Generations is this, like, greatest hits uh, of okay. Monster Hunter. It's like, oh, that guy's there, and he's there. Oh, I missed him. But, uh all of the quality of life improvements that you know are prevalent in world are not going to be in this. You think oh. it'll be hard, you know. I mean, you're a it's long gonna time monster. It's going to be so player. hard to yeah, go back. Yeah, it'll be hard to go back. Yeah, right. even just playing a little bit today, I'm just like, yeah. oh, oh yeah, oh right, I no, can't I gotta, do that. Okay, gotta, oh yeah, I got to cook this meat. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, saw the uh, surge too. Um, mm -hmm. It's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, like uh, hot on the heels of the last. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Yeah. But they're making some cool changes to that as well. Every like the combat seems a little bit faster paced mm -hmm. cool. um and uh you've got like drones now that you can like I, I love the fact that in the surge that 
yo, I like that dude's arm blade. I'm going to cut off that arm yeah. and then put it onto my arm. Yeah, targeting body parts to make armor for the, that Such body a cool part is, is a cool and, yeah, idea. It's super prevalent in this game as well. Like I, I uh, saw them uh, chop off one dude's arm, got the gun from it, and then put it on a drone on my back. Ooh. Uh, cool. So that would just be just like an additional command now. Like cool. I can just shoot people with my drone button. It's, they they say anything about if the world is going to be bigger, like the levels, like the first game, the levels were a little too small. Yeah, a little a little yeah. enclosed. And this mm -hmm. one, uh, they had us in um, like a park area, like a synthetic park uh, that takes place a couple months after the uh, the first mm -hmm. surge or, or whatever. But it feels much more open. Um, it, but is, they didn't show us like a, a map or anything like that. But uh, they definitely gave us a feel that it's going to be Far more non-linear okay. uh, than cool. the first one. Cool. Is it the same kind of Dark Soulsy and totally. everything responds when you yeah. save and all that? As far as I can tell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They didn't go through like multiple spawn points or anything like that. But uh, yeah, they just kind of focused on like some of the combat changes and you know showing the world. So it cool. looks a little more breathable and yeah, much right. more customizable. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, yeah, a little bit of indiv indivisible, which I, I'm super in love with that game. It's, it looks very nice. It's some and, of the best animation I, in the business. I liked the Seriously. combat a lot more than I thought I would. Like, yeah, I was not like, a Valkyrie profile like, player. Technically, it's turn-based. You know, it's an active time battle right, stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, all your four characters are assigned to the face buttons or whatever. Uh, but you get, you know, uh, a bunch of, like, three different attacks that you can do per character. So it's like, you know... It, it, it feels Forward fast and an fluid. Forward attack or up and attack. Yeah, you can hit up and down, and up but and you can do that multiple times as well. So it's not like you know you're hitting one button, kind of waiting for the timer to come back. It's just like bouncing back and forth. You know, so you're juggling and at the same time as you're and then queuing up. A trigger and hitting the button for like a block stance. Yeah, and stuff like it's, that it's too. extremely active. Yeah. Um, and that was that was surprising. But yeah, they showed off a, a bunch of the new characters, and they're all they're very well animated. Uh, lots of personality. I can't I can't wait to play that game. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it. I, Unless you got, well, you got one oh, more. Oh, Dan's thing. got something. Yeah. I got a couple. Right. We got if a, we have time. We got All right. We got I'll it. say real quick then. Okay. Uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Is okay. Kind of exactly what you want out of that thing. It is Resident Evil 2 setting with Resident Evil 4's controls and, and perspective and everything. Yeah. The map is a million times better, like marking POIs and things like that and letting you know, like, doors, what, what's accessible, what's not, what you've tried, what you haven't. Uh, are, you know, are the environments like largely the same, or is it really kind of like the same type of? Hey, it's still a police station, but it's a totally yeah. different layout. It's or, like how they did the Resident Evil One remake, and yeah. that like it's still the mansion. It still follows the same basic order of events, mm -hmm. but there are like little rooms and things that are a little bit different. Things like you can collect boards and board up windows to the outside. Things like that to keep zombies from coming in. Cool, just like Call of Duty. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The, the ultimate zombie game. Oh Christ! No. Um, it's uh, it was really good. I, I liked it a lot. Played Mega Man Eleven as well. Yeah. Uh, that does some really cool things that I didn't expect. It's not just the like nine and ten nostalgia thing. Yeah. He's got these two gears. One you can hold in R one to speed or slow down time basically for yourself, mm -hmm. which really helps when like blocks are falling and you have to jump on them yeah. and stuff like oh, that. Sure. Far or less, enemies far like, less like gimmicky than you would think. Like yeah, it, totally. it's super useful. And you hold L one and uh, your shots become much more powerful. It's a cooldown thing. If you run it too far, it breaks and it takes forever mm. to come back. If you're low on health, you can do both, and so like you are moving super like fast in slow motion. Oh, if that right, makes sense. Right, yeah, yeah. And your shots are really powerful. Yeah. Also, the bosses have that too, so they will have like a power mm. mode and a speed mode. Mm. So like the boss I fought, Blockman, had a power thing where he got huge. He had a speed one where he starts throwing blocks super fast at me. Mm. Uh, it it was it feels good. It yeah. feels like Mega Man, but. You know, I didn't want another nine or ten where it's like we've had the NES nostalgia totally. ones, right? And whatever you think of the the new art style, it still is at least not just hey, it's NES again. Yeah. Have they talked the price for either of those, the remake or eleven? Um, I don't think they have. Um, Curious about that. But real quick, I know we're short on time. Uh, Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night. Oh yeah. Uh, I was worried about it going in. I wasn't big on the art style or whatever. Yeah. But Jason and I played it. I'm all in. It feels cool. like Symphony it's in pretty, pretty much every way. Yeah, I played it last cool. year and it was like, okay, th this yeah. like it, it seems like it'll get there. Uh, yeah. Or it seems like if you know, I guess if it gets there, it'll be real cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So cool. No, it's. it's I'm still not completely great. sold on the animation. It's you know, it's 2.5D. Uh, sure. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. It looks a little janky in parts, but I, I think it plays pretty it well. It plays great. Like the, that boss fight on the pirate ship was really cool. Yeah. And like all the different systems, and it's like Symphony where you're getting a ton of different like armor and tons yeah. of weapons that you it's don't like ever have to crafting use. Crafting and shit now. It's like, it, yeah, sure. And like familiars yeah. and like all that Symphony yeah. stuff. Like it's, it, especially after seeing Curse of the Moon and how good they had it with right. that. Yeah. Uh, like they get Castlevania, they get what's good about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And great. like some cool. weapons have special attacks, like a Hadouken motion or something like that. So mm -hmm. you right. put the Kung Fu Like boots. Symphony did, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, thanks everybody for, for your input. I know. Yeah. You want to hear about Sonic. Yeah.
Racing. Yeah, I want to hear about Team Sonic Racing. We'll get to that later. <laughs> okay, all right. We're going to save Team Sonic Racing. I mean, got to have a showstopper. At <laughs> of course. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. just Man event. still one more whole day. I want to give it a, no. I, don't, I don't want our guests to feel like they're, you know, have <laughs> exactly. to follow that up. Exactly. Uh, all right, we're going to take another break and get some more guests out here. Uh, stay tuned.